Welcome back to End Time Prophet Judge, part number 38. As we're uh, finishing up the et, the untranslatable word, the Aleph and the Tav, and moving on to other parts of uh, Genesis 1-1, I thought I'd bring in that uh, book that I was talking about last week. Uh, it's called The Elements of Style by Strunk and White. Actually, I think it's about 100 years old. I think it was uh, printed in uh, 1920, so it's almost 100 years old. But it's a famous, very famous book. And uh, as we were talking last week, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, uh, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as the thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt. Now, I know most people are saying that's probably the, the, the moon and the stars and all that. But I also gave you enough scriptures last week that the elements, the scripture, the word of God is going to, to dissipate as it already has dissipated in, in uh, this world and in the uh, uh, United States of America. I was having a conversation the other day. How did this country get so, um, for lack of a better term, perverted, twisted? You know, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, okay, pornography was something you would find over here in the shadows on the sidelines. Okay, abortions was something on the sidelines. Now it's mainstream. Now you get shouted down if you're against abortion. You get shouted down if you're against porn, pornography or anything that's not from the, from the Lord. Okay, if, you're from, if it's from the Lord, you get shouted down. Where it was in the, in, uh, in the sidelines, in the shadows, the demonic, it's now in the forefront. And has taken over the way people live their lives. That culture has changed. So while people could say in uh, 2 Peter 3.10, it says the elements shall melt with fervent heat. That's the King James. In the English Standard Version, it says, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved. Now, it will be heavenly bodies, but we can already see how the scripture is dissipating throughout the world. But let's focus on the United States of America. Scripture dissipating through the United States of America. And more importantly, it's dissipating in the church. People more put more uh, 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 emphasis on the way you should feel as opposed to actual scripture. Well, don't you think this is what it means, Pastor Mike? Well, don't you think we should, you know, it's for this day now? No. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. Holiness is holiness. Whether it was 5,000 years ago or 5,000 years from now. Holiness is holiness. Light is light. Darkness is darkness. Bereshit bara Elohim en hashmaya vehafadetz. In the beginning. Now we've talked, I, I've talked about how the Aleph is used in the, the name of Adam. Aleph, Dalet, and the final Mem. Okay, it's not used, it's not the first word used in the, in the uh, uh, scripture, Genesis 1-1. Now, I would also say because in Genesis 1-1, let's go to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. I'll read it, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. Verse 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head, and his tail, verse 4, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to, vow, to, for, to, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, 
who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Verse 7. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Verse 8. And prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. The dragon and the dragon's angels could not prevail. Michael and his angels, Michael the archangels and his angels of the Lord, won the victory, won the battle. Verse 8 again. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. In the beginning, here, in the beginning, there's a reason. More importantly, um, the Aleph and the Bet is what happened, what we can't see, happened over here. Before the beginning, before time, in heaven. Let's go to 1 John 3.8. 1 John 3, 8 says, He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. The devil sinneth from the beginning. He was cast down to earth. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Why did Jesus, when you ask people, or they ask, why did Jesus come in the flesh? Oh, he came in the flesh to save us. No, to save us from what? Save us from who? Okay, it all started in heaven first. Satan got his pride going. He wanted to be as God. Okay. God kicked him out. He cast him down to a place he had to create, which was earth. And he showed him through the whole Bible. And don't think that Satan is here with God. He's not the mirror of God. He's not even close to being like God. He's a created being. But he is accountable to whom much is given, much is created. Now we were all born on earth. Satan was in heaven. He knew the glory of God. He knew the righteousness of the Lord. He was accountable for that. And for that, every sin on earth is going to go back to him. I'm going to read that again. 1 John 3, 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. But that beginning with Bereshit. In the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. He created it so he could throw Satan down into earth. For this purpose, the Son of God, Yeshua, was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Starting with his first conversation with Adam and Eve. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. The earth is his footstool. It's like psh, nothing to him. But again, it's everything to him. But that's where he threw Satan down here on earth. Well, gee, Pastor Mike, that's not very nice for us. But he has given us authority over Satan if we, if, if we submit to the Lord. Satan has no authority over us. He has no power over us unless we give him the power. Unless we give him the authority. Let me finish Isaiah 66 1. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. I'm sorry, footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? Now, everything from Genesis 1 1 
is building up to where the Lord is going to come and abide here into the new heaven, the new earth, the new Jerusalem. Just to throw Satan's in rub it in Satan's face. Let's go to 1 John 3, 4. It says, Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. Torah. If you remember our teaching on scripture, the word scripture, when it's used in the in the in the in our scriptures, Paul, Peter, they taught using the Hebrew scriptures. There was no New Testament scriptures to evangelize. They used the Tanakh to bring them into Jesus. All those scriptures I read to you about identification in the last several weeks, about I seen Jesus, he even says these, the scriptures are concerning me. Go back, study them, read them, understand them. That Jesus is all throughout the Tanakh. That's why I said last week we need to start scripture at the beginning. That's the foundation, understanding where, where Yeshua was. Satan came up against Yeshua. He came up against him in heaven. That's why when he tempts him after 40 days of fasting, the Lord uses scripture against him. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Turn this rock into bread and you'll eat. He had to eat for 40 days. Because man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God does he live. Deuteronomy 8, 3. He uses his own scripture, his own words to come against Satan. Nothing in the New Testament, but the Old Testament, the First Testament, the Hebrew scriptures. And if it's good enough for Yeshua to use against Satan, how come mainstream Christianity isn't using it? They should be. Because that is your strength. That is the foundation. That is your cornerstone. That is your rock. I'm going to go back to a scripture we spoke of last week. Deuteronomy 29, 29. It says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. As you seek the Lord's face, and I hope it's daily, as you seek the Lord's face, you're going to get revelation, and more revelation, and more revelation. And with that revelation, you're going to get stronger in the word. You're going to go from, as a child, from milk to meat. And as you're stronger, you're not just going to be serving the Lord, you're going to be teaching scripture. How? Not just maybe like I am right now, but the way you live your life, your lifestyle, your manner of life. So this is how you're supposed to do it. The Gospels, as I've said before in this uh, series of teachings, the Gospel is a documented way of how to live the Torah. And Jesus came to teach us how to live the Torah. Don't let anybody lie to you and say the Torah is outdated because that's a lie. I like to go back to Revelation chapter 12. Let me go back to verse 8 and then we'll get back to the dragon. Uh, Revelation 12, 8. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. He deceived the whole world. Now another word for deceiveth is deception. And I had mentioned the, the book, the, the Art of War by Swan Tzu. And one of the main things of that is, of that book is, all war is based on deception. 
So if you're going to use that, and most military colleges use the art of war, then we are in a war against the devil. Because he's trying to deceive us, and we need to uncover all his deceptions. People are deceived, like, uh, I want to make love to you. No. You don't make love to them. That, they're talking about sex. Sex is sex. Loving somebody is getting to know them. Developing a relationship with them. Just as you develop a relationship, a greater relationship with Yeshua. With your parents, with your brothers and sisters, with your co-workers. None of it has anything to do with sex. We have twisted that word love to the flesh, to the sexuality and sensuality of this time, 2019. And it's all twisted and perverted. Love is developing and increasing a relationship. Getting to know somebody, getting to developing, number one, a stronger relationship with Yeshua. And that means you should have a stronger relationship today than you did yesterday, and a stronger relationship with Yeshua tomorrow than you have today. That should be your whole goal. Everything else will follow that. To love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And to love your neighbor as yourself, the scripture says. And you can hang all of the Torah and all the prophets on those two commandments. Revelation 12, 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which have cursed them before our God day and night. 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, that you, that you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the seal, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man-child. Now the woman, as you know, represents the church. Verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and the times and a half time from a face from the face of the serpent and the serpent verse 15 and the serpent cast out of this mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood verse 16 and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her up opened her mouth and swallow up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Now I read all that just to get to this phrase. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Some people never fight with Satan. And they have ups and downs in their own life. People have called me a witch. Oh, Pastor Mike must be a witch. When I go to that church, we're always getting attacked. You're getting attacked because scripture says, and to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep, keep the commandments of God, which we do, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, which we do. Very few places do both. And we operate in the gifts of the Spirit. There's some churches that keep the testimony of Jesus Christ. Some churches that, that uh, or Messianic churches, that keep the commandments of God, but they don't operate in the Spirit, in the gifts of the Spirit. We do. We operate in the gifts. We teach the Torah. We keep the Torah. And we have the testimony of Jesus Christ. 
Satan's highly irate. And he has a remnant and, and went to make war with, uh, with the remnant of her seed. And that's us. It's not the whole thing. As you look at the scripture, it says the remnant. It's a portion. And that's us. We are the ones that are called to do that. I want to follow up on Revelation. Uh, let's look at Revelation 14, 12. It'll touch with uh, Revelation 12, 17. Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patient of the saints. And read it again. Here is the patience of the saints. Here, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And it does take patience to keep the commandments of the Lord. And now we're not just talking about the Ten Commandments. We're talking about the width, the depth, the breadth, the volume of the Torah. Yeshua has taught us how to live that. And it takes patience. Relying on the faith. Relying on God to go before us. Not repaying evil for evil. Yes, that's quoted in the, in the New Testament. But Yeshua teaches that through, through the Old Testament. Through the First Testament. Let God go before you when the Ark of the Covenant would be raised. It was a let God arise and let the enemy be scattered. When you show the enemy, okay, because it says enemies, when the Ark of the Covenant, when the resurrected Christ shows in you, the enemies have to scatter. It's scripture. Let God arise and let the enemy be scattered. We're not going to film next week. It's Thanksgiving. But in the meantime, this is a perfect time for you to allow God to, to rise and resurrect in your heart, in your mind, in your family. And you watch the enemy be scattered. It's sad, but a lot of people don't like Thanksgiving because... Oh, Sister Gertrude's going to be over there, or Aunt so-and-so, or Tijuana, or whoever. This is the time you put God for, first in your life. And let Him, the, through the Holy Spirit, be that beam of light. And let God arise in your life and let the enemy be scattered. Don't go into a family dinner or a household and, oh, i got to see them. Let them see a new person in you. The new man. Let's go to following up on that. Isaiah chapter 8. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 8. Uh, verses 16 and uh, we can read it verse 16 through 20. <clears throat> Again, this is Isaiah chapter 8 verse 16. It says, bind up the testimony. And we were talking about the testimony of Jesus Christ earlier. Seal the law, the Torah, among my disciples. And I will wait upon the Lord, 17, that hideth his face from the house of Jacob. And I will look for him. 18. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are the, for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in the Mount Zion. 19. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God, for the living to the dead. 20. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, is because there is no light in them. There is no light in them. If they're talking to dead gods, dead idols, but you can only do that if you're if you're being if the testimony of Jesus Christ, 
The testimony of the Lord is bound in you. You can use that scripture. What's bound on earth is bound in heaven. <clears throat> the Shema. Okay? And you shall bind it. Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord God is one Lord. You shall love him with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And this word I teach you today, you be put in your heart. You should diligently teach your children as they walk along the way, as they, as they walk, uh, uh, sit in the house, walk along the way, lie it down, raise it up. And you shall bind it as a sign to your hand. And that testimony of Jesus Christ should be bound to you all the time. See, verses 16 and 20 uh, border 17, 18, and 19 on the things they're not supposed to do. 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, is because there is no light in them. If you want light in you, you have to speak light. You can't speak darkness and say light's in you. You can fool people that are in darkness, but you can't fool God, and the other person you can't fool is Satan. Because Satan will be just as dark as you. And as we read earlier in the book of Revelation, how he is to deceiveth the whole world. And as we were talking about uh, the art of war, deception, excuse me, is the main point of war, to deceive them. <coughs> Let's go to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1, verse 2. Ah, let me just read verse 1 and 2. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, verse 2, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. And of all things that he saw, blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And we also know in the book of Revelation, because we're spending a lot of time in Revelation, Revelation 19, uh, 10, <coughs> Second part of the verse. As the testimony of Jesus Christ, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So your life should be a prophetic lifestyle. You will get to that point when you're speaking of Yeshua all the time. I'm not talking about just handing out tracts on the corner someplace. I don't do that. I've never done that. But I try to make my life is of Christ. And pretty soon you'll start, I don't know, saying things and somebody else will say, well, isn't that this? And you, you, you'll, you'll start ending people, people's sentences with answers. And, and you're just prophetic in all, all ways. End time prophet judge isn't just somebody that can give a word of wisdom. Or a word of knowledge. It's a, a way of life on to learn the Torah, teach the Torah, keeping the Torah, and passing the Torah on to others. Amen?